So, oh, and I believe we are live. Hello, everyone. This is uh, Michelle Baker with the Women of Sales and Influence, and welcome. It is Monday, October fourteenth, and I have with me a no October twenty first. I, you know what? <laughs> so hey, put a calendar in front of me. <laughs> It happens. Uh, like time does not stand still for anyone, not even for Michelle. So we have with us another amazing woman of sales and influence, Felicia Jones. And my name is Michelle Baker. I am the national uh, director of global sales development at the National Association of Sales Professional, who is also our sponsor of this conversation, as well as I'm an expert confidence coach, a sales strategist, and an international keynote speaker. And today we have with us this amazing woman who is helping women find their voice. Ah! So Felicia, <laughs> <laughs> as the rule on this, this conversation is, we like to show women that it's okay to brag on yourself and tell us what makes you amazing. So I will hand the time, the mic over to you. So tell us what makes you amazing. Oh my gosh, I have. Thank you, thank you, thank you, <laughs> Michelle, like, for having me. Time in the day, I right? know. <laughs> Actually, I, I don't know. I always struggle with talking about myself, but <laughs> I usually start off with I love to travel the world, make friends, and drink prosecco. Oh. But um, and that makes me amazing. But if we had to get down to serious and business stuff, so I'm the founder of I Find You Clothes, and it's not clothing is uh, you closing deals, but I go out and research and find speaking engagements for people who want to market their businesses on stage around the globe. And I stepped into that because I used to be a research scientist for the US Navy. I have degrees in engineering and computer science and kind of found my little niche with um, being able to research stuff, which is kind of cool. Um, I call it um, my daytime job. Um, I'm actually, you can find me at Keep Up With Mrs. Jones and you can see all the crazy stuff that I do. But um, I'm on a national television show called Daily Blast Live where I answer personal finance questions each week. I'm a two time TEDx speaker. Um, and I just love to just go place. I really do love to travel though. <laughs> That it like, see, I love your resume, right? <laughs> and um, two time TEDx speaker, that's absolutely credit, and a TV show, right? Yeah. I'm, I'm going to ask you a little bit about your background, and okay. um, I'd love to hear more about the TV show because I think I heard you talk about finances or. Yeah, that was my, the, what started all of this. I started off in money coaching. And, yeah. and so a lot of my speaking is around um, finances and money and budgeting and business owners. But I found my little secret genius zone with um, being able to research and find gigs. So I launched a company around that as well. Nice, nice. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and so um, one of the things that I see more and more now with online marketing and speaking and influence is that people are, and if I hear you correctly, you found what you loved, you got really good at it, and now you're branching. You're seeing where the other branches of the tree from where you started are kind of leading you um, where you get to get some more of your creative genius going and empower other people at the same time. So it's like a win-win. It is a win-win. And it's so funny because um, I know a lot of people always ask, is this something you love? And I always struggle with that one. It is not something, I don't know if I love it, but um, it comes so easy to me. It's kind of if you ever heard of those, um, like the baseball players and the analogy of when they can see a fastball, it's like the ball slows down so much they can see the seams of it as it's yes. coming. And that's kind of how I see with the research out of all the things that I've done. I think I do love the challenge of it, but it has come so easy for me to get out here and research. And it's kind of like second nature. And mm -hmm. I love it when people give me a challenge, um, when it's like, okay, I want to find a stage where um, I get to talk about puppets. I'm like, done, give me three weeks. <laughs> so maybe that's more of it. And then me being on stage has been, it's been fun. Um, I can actually walk away from speaking um, because the challenge has always been with me finding the gigs. Sometimes it's, all, it's always funny. It's like, cause I'm doing all these things to find them. And then they're like, oh, we want you to speak. I'm like, oh, you want me to actually talk to people? Okay, I'll do that. Uh, <laughs> so it's gone well, it's gone very well. I found my little weird little niche that I, I guess I'm good at it. That's absolutely amazing. And I love that you pointed out that it's not necessarily something that you love. Cause mm -hmm. I know um, uh, where we say, you know, passion, where passion leads, um, profits can follow. 
Yeah. And sometimes when we, when people reference the loving part is because it does make it easier when you're yeah. enjoying it, it makes it easier because being in business for yourself is not easy, right? Because uh, there's, there's uh, no. a lot of little components of it that mo many business owners do that they don't necessarily like. Am you I know, correct? It is not easy. Um, one of the jokes I have with a friend, she told me, uh, she went to University of North Dakota and she said, oh, my school just added an entrepreneurship degree. And I was like, well, what are they teaching you? How to cry and not mess up your mascara? Like, it's like, I don't know what else you learn in entrepreneurship other than, you know, like, like okay, don't mess up my eyes before I go talk to someone. <laughs> um, it has been a journey. This is actually my fifth year in business this month. And man, the ups and downs are, are just amazing. And it is not the easiest thing <clears throat> I've ever done. And I tell people, I said, this is probably the hardest thing I've ever done in my entire life. And it has taken a few years to find to find that sweet spot, to find what I'm good at and what I'm great at. Cause I can go toe to toe with anyone when it comes to researching for speaking gigs. I think I'm amazing at it and, and just owning it because before what I was doing, I always felt I was good at it, but I don't think I've ever owned it. But now that I own ah. it, it's just like, it does come easy. I mean, the sales calls are so much easier because now I'm just like, you want me or not? <laughs> Because otherwise, I got like five more phone calls after this. So let's let's figure this out really quick. But um, I and one of the things I've noticed, um, I did a a keynote talk uh, last week, my first women in tech keynote talk. Uh, because my other part of my life, I'm a STEM advocate and I'm a research girl and a a STEM and math and geek and all the things. Yep, yep. And and I was telling some of the women in the room, I was like, you got to start owning your greatness. And when you own your greatness, nobody will be able to push you over. Now, granted, it's taken me 40 some years to figure that out. But um, it is fun when you finally own your greatness and you know that you're great at whatever it is that you're doing. Yes, yes. Yeah. It is uh, a, a saying that I once heard that I've held to heart is when there's no enemy within, there can be none without. That's true. Right. And that's, that's only your greatness. When I truly understand that everything is happening for me, it's, yeah. there's no good, there's no bad, there's no right, there's no wrong. It's me learning to leverage mm -hmm. and utilize everything oh, in gosh, my favor yeah. and to step into the fact that I got like a hundred billion brain cells and unlimited imagination. So what could it be instead of what my telling myself that it's awful or it didn't go right or this is unfair. Yeah. Why not tell myself a story about how awesome this is? <laughs> yeah. You know what? I, um, I had a mentor who had a lot of tragedy and lost both of her son and um, her husband to suicide. And when I went to the son's funeral, I, from that point on, I said, I will never have a bad day ever again. Frustrating. Yeah. But I, I don't have bad days anymore. And I see everything as just an opportunity um, there's a lesson learned, even when things just go weird, like, okay, I learned a lot. I won't do that. But um, I just try to live as much as possible, take, take on as much as, um, as many opportunities as possible and just kind of go forward. And I know a lot of people say, get out of your comfort zone and make yourself un uncomfortable. Um, I think I just live in that spot where it's like, you know what? I got nothing to lose. These people don't know me. Let's do it. <laughs> yes. Yes. And I will say um, kudos to you for um, taking uh, that from that example of someone mm -hmm. who had such incredible strategy and, and realizing and recognizing there's a lot of pain and I can mm -hmm. choose to um, sit in pain or I can choose to move towards pleasure. Yeah, I can choose to say that I'm going to make this the best I've, with everything I have again. And that's, you know, some people might call that Pollyanna. And I'm like, okay, I'll be her. We, yeah, Pollyanna me. If, <laughs> yep. If you need to nickname me that to make yourself feel good about feeling bad, so be yeah. it. But I'm not going to stop feeling good because I've yeah. been on the other side. So I'd love to talk a little bit about um, how you got to the, because one of the things how I met you was I was referred to you, I find you clothes. And I love the platform. Anybody watching, I find you clothes. C-L-O-S-E. Look it up. While you're here, I'm actually on Facebook. So if you want to ask her a question, we can um, ask her the question right now. Anything I love about questions. speaking. I right? love questions. <laughs> so do I. <laughs> you can even ask me questions about TEDx. Um, I've been on the selection committee for TEDx, so I can give you a little bit of insight into that as well. Yeah, so we're going to get to that. <laughs> so saying that you were, um, your background, how do you go from the background you had where you said, you know, I was really good at it and I liked it, but I didn't own it. 
So what, mm -hmm. what was the catalyst or the trigger or the decision that you had to go from, you know, good to great, so to speak? Okay. And I assume we're going to talk about um, actually launching this new company. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, we got, I got so many backgrounds. I have to keep up with them. So, so I started my business five years ago. I took an early retirement from working for the government as a computer scientist and I launched the business. And one of the things that what a lot of us do, we end up with a business coach and you have everybody else idea of what you're supposed to be doing. And I went down all of those different routes. I mean, my original goal was to start a business, talk about money uh, and around travel. That really is what drives me is to travel. And one of my coaches told me, oh, you should try speaking as a way to market your business. And I was like, yeah, I don't like doing that. Uh, <laughs> I was like, I was, I had the field of dreams plan. You know, you build it, they will bring you billions. Yeah, that didn't work that way. Uh, it didn't work that way at all. So I realized, okay, I'm going to have to actually go start telling people what I do. And so one speaking engagement became another and it kept working. And it, it was, it's such an odd thing because I'm a, I call myself a high functioning introvert. Mm -hmm. Um, going on stage is not my natural, uh, is not my, in my natural being because, um, I just had, oh my gosh, I have two more gigs to go. I just had six every week for the last um, month. And, um, I'm probably going to be under the bed in about three weeks when I'm done, but it, it was the one thing that actually worked. Uh, the social media didn't work. I wasn't great at closing deals, but the speaking worked. And then it just became more and more. And people started asking me, how do you land these speaking gigs? And my brain, research me, you know, researcher of me, like, oh, it's easy. It's the internet. What else do you need? And people were like, no. I was like, yeah. And my friend Twyla, um, uh, Twyla Kay, she's amazing. And she was like, you keep saying it's the internet. I have it in front of me. It's not working. And I was like, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> um, and so I realized my patience to go and find these things actually worked. And then my persistence in going after them work. Um, I had a friend who I call it the 1130 at night friend is the only friend that you can talk to about everything at nighttime and they can kind of curse you out because everybody's sleep. And, and she said, you need to actually go help people with this. I was like, no, the world needs budgets. She's like, yeah, no, you need to go help people with this. And, and you know, she gave me a, a nice little tongue lashing and I did my first class pre-sold it, sold out in two weeks. And that's when I did my first workshop on landing speaking gigs. And, um, and there are some other things that happened before that, realizing that coaching was just not my thing. So last year I took a walkabout in London, one of my favorite cities. I went over there to go figure out my life because I just had a birthday and I was like, we got to figure this out really fast. And, and it just came to me. I was like, screw this. I'm good at it people keep asking me, I, I would get phone calls every day and the, can I pick your brains? And I was like, fine, I'll just actually go and help people with it. Um, it took a while to kind of figure out how I wanted to do it. And then this year, literally in April, um, when I talk about money and numbers, I tell people you pay attention to your numbers because they are not lying to you and they're telling you the truth. And my numbers weren't looking great for my, my money business. And I was like, okay, it's time to hustle. And literally overnight, I launched this business um, because before I thought it had to be perfect. Mm -hmm. It wasn't perfect as long as I delivered what I said I was going to do. And it literally took off very little marketing, very little social media presence, but people have been signing up. People have been finding um, speaking gigs. Um, I talked to everybody who wants to talk to me to give them some pointers and tips and, you know, the biggest success so far is one of the young ladies that joined. She just spoke at Quicken Loans TechCon. She wants more corporate gigs. And I was like, well, there you go. <laughs> and she's going to have another um, corporate, a big international corporate gig um, in April of next year. So I'm just excited. And inherently, my, my business is self-serving because I love to travel. And I figure if I get you to work hard enough, you can get all these gigs and just invite me and I can just show up and take photos. So then I get to travel somewhere. So, so nice. it's a self-serving business. <laughs> Excuse me. Yes. And I love that um, you, you took something that, that you do naturally that people kept asking you. And I, I remember um, when I started my business, I didn't know what to do. And I remember my coach saying, what is, your, what is the number one question you're asked? 
because that's what you're an expert in. What yeah. do people come to you all the time for? And I would, and I, and I still teach that to people. Everyone's mm-hmm. an expert, right? Or I should say mostly everyone because yeah. they're <laughs> absolutes, right? So mostly everyone is an expert. And all you got to do is what is the number one thing they come to you for? Now, it might yeah. not be what you want to be an expert in. That's where you get to change and evolve and grow. But isn't that uh, crazy though? Because yeah. I refuse... I mean, for years, I was just like, I don't want to be associated with speaking or PR because essentially that's what it was. And my friends were like, why? I was like, no, I'm money. That's what I do. <laughs> uh, but I avoided it. But you're right. When when people keep asking, you have to kind of pay attention. Finally. Yeah. Oh, well, mine's was, uh, you know, I started in vision and helping people to find themselves and get clear on vision. And what people kept asking me about is selling right? Because I have this 18 years of background. I won mm-hmm. one awards in sales. I always got promotions. Um, it's seamless. That conversation to convert people, to enroll people, to build advocacy is seamless for me, yeah. right? Because I don't think of it as I'm trying to sell someone. I'm, you know, extending value. So again, that same thing with you. So full circle, I am now in sales. <laughs> okay. Yeah. It, it is a full circle journey. And sometimes it, you <laughs> end up you end up in places that you never saw coming. And, you know, just looking back five years ago, um, even before I switched um, agencies, I mean, I, I call myself, I was a lab rat in the, in the lab in um, San Diego, California. And it's just been, I mean, I mean, there are some days I wake up, I'm like, whose life is this? Like, you couldn't have told me I would be on a national television show, like what? <laughs> or speaking internationally or speaking on stage anyway. And it is, I, I just say it's been a blessed life. I've been having tons of fun and I just appreciate the opportunities that I have been given and I've gone after as well. Yes. Yes. Uh, absolutely amazing. I, I, it's my privilege to have this conversation yeah. and share it with other people. And I would love to tell, you know, talk about TEDx because so many people, <laughs> you know, I, I keep, you know, what? I consistently keep bumping into people in my life who have two, two TED talks. Right. <laughs> and then on the other end of the spectrum, I meet people who like myself have none. Right. So <laughs> So, um, yeah. So talk about how, you know, uh, that idea worth sharing or whatever you want to, you know, expound upon in these next couple of minutes here. You you know what, TEDx and any other stage. So just so that everyone knows. So, um, I like to say, I'm just not a speaker and I just speak at you, but I'm actually in another life. Um, I'm actually a speaker coordinator. I actually book speakers for events and I get invited to selection committees to help choose speakers for, um, for bigger events. And it's been interesting being on both sides of that world, you know, being a speaker myself and then, and then being on the other side of people pitching. So when I talk about speaking, I typically go to the other side of everything that I see others doing. And the same thing happens with TEDx. So I, I had the privilege of being on a selection committee for TEDx this year. And, and as someone who has been a TEDx speaker, so I'll be floating the line back and forth. But what I've noticed with TEDx is there are a lot of people who want them and you have to actually sit down and decide what you want from a TEDx. A lot of people assume that as soon as they do one, they will blow up. It's not that that's just not how it happens (laughs) Um, because people come to me like, well, Brene Brown did one and she blew up. Well, Brene Brown had 15 years of research on her side and she has a lot of credibility and she's done some amazing things. And, and you have to kind of look at it in that lens of, do you want a TEDx talk and you want to be able to call yourself a TEDx speaker? Cool. Or do you want a TEDx talk that actually gets people um, to pay attention and watch? Two different things. Because I know a lot of people who have some TEDx talks and you know they get a couple of hundred views. And I know people who have 15,000 views. So you have to really decide what it is that you want as um, your outcome to be as a TEDx speaker. The other thing I will say is that TEDx is not about your story. There's some elements of your story, but it really isn't. It's not a strategy talk. It's not, here's your plan talk. It literally is what they say, is an idea worth sharing to the world. And I typically tell people, if you don't have anything to say, if you don't have anything compelling to say yet, wait, because 
you will not like your experience. I mean, the experience is always fun, but you'll wish you had done more. And, and I really want people, if you're going to get on that TEDx stage, if you're going to do the months of coaching and just thinking in such a different way to become a thought leader, I want it to be worth it and to be of impact to you. So you have to get out of business sense. Stop talking about business. It's not about your, about what you're trying to do, what you're trying to sell. Um, I just talked to someone today. They were like, well, should I wait for my book? It has nothing to do with a book. It is you and your most profound thought leadership mind. And I know it's a big task, but oh. it really is. You have to get into thought leadership um, mindset. And if you don't know what thought leadership is, go Google it. And you have to get out of how to, because you want your TEDx to be so impactful. You want to be proud of it. You want to send it out and you want people to be inspired and transformed by it. And, and that's just what I've observed because my TEDx talk, I thought like, you know, my parents would watch it. I didn't realize my talk and it was all, um, it's called all girls are great at math. I didn't realize I was going to get hate mail. I didn't realize I was going to get as much negative feedback as I did, but it's all good. Cause I was like, that means you watched it. Um, I got old school hate mail. People actually mail letters to my business address. Uh, but wow. the outcome of it, you know, I got to be on NPR's Ted radio hour with Guy Raz was so nervous for that. Um, I'm in a documentary about math in America, just landed my, my first women in tech, um, uh, keynote uh, last week just because somebody watched the TEDx talk. So do it. If you're going to do it, make sure you are in your most profound, compelling um, mode. And sometimes for people, even for people like me, that may be the one time <laughs> it's like the most compelling thing you have in you and just make it compelling. So um, for anyone who wants to get out there, I, I highly encourage you. It is an experience unlike any other experience. It is not a typical speaking gig. And the way I stepped into my talk, um, because I talked about STEM, um, for those of you, science, technology, engineering, and math. Mm -hmm. And um, I talked about women in tech and girls um, being influenced by math. And I knew my talk wasn't a lightweight subject. And because I'm one of the few women in tech, you know, um, as far as, um, I mean, what, women make up 20% of all tech careers black women make up 1%. I wanted to be very, very responsible with that platform and made sure what I said would, would have impact. So, so that's how I stepped into my um, TEDx talk to just be responsible with the platform. Cause I knew there weren't other people who looked like me saying what I was saying. So yeah, <laughs> I know it's a mouthful. <laughs> yeah, that was a mouthful, but it was actually uh, profound and mm -hmm. informative and power. Mm -hmm. it, you know, just like you said, it was profound and thinking and listening and seeing your decision was not just to say you did a TED -ed talk, mm -hmm. but actually you wanted to share an idea worth sharing. Yeah. Right. So you, you shared something that has made a difference. Cause if it didn't make a difference, you one wouldn't have got, I mean, you have people to whip out the pen. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, and you actually know what? write a letter. Like I, no, she didn't got I, me so pissed off. I'm a write a letter. I mean, <laughs> she wrote, uh, I mean, like, I mean, found my address, put my name on. I was like, wow, this is a lot of effort. So right? yeah. It's, and I was, it's, it's passion. So, you know, one of the things, uh, my mentor always says is that sometimes you cannot funnel the passion. You cannot sit there and hope that the passion is all going to be on the loving side. Oh, no. <laughs> you have actually fired up an emotion and sometimes it's going to come out that other end and, yeah. it's, and, and, and you've lit a fire. That's the thing. Yeah. It's way better than having that neutral. Yeah. Oh, oh, that was yay. Okay. Yeah. When, when is coffee break? Right. Yeah. It was so unexpected. I mean, it's kind of like, fun and like oh my god and I called my husband I was like I got hate mail like oh my gosh that means they watched uh, <laughs> yeah, right? so it was it was cool but I did um most of the responses and I still get messages even today they were like I'm just so happy I showed my daughter your video and she wasn't doing great in math and all of a sudden she's doing making straight A's so I was like I don't know if I'm gonna take credit for that but I'm, I'm just e excited that they're doing it so um it, it's it's been an ex uh, doing a TEDx talk was an experience I've never had before. It's an exhausting experience, but it is, um, it's a lot of fun. And, and, and the way I started it, I didn't even have anything in mind. It was probably the worst application I've ever done when it comes to pitching, 
because I just started ranting and I just had this crazy idea. Like if we create a stereotype that all girls are great at math from the beginning, we can literally just run the world as women. And, and that, you know, and it was such a rant. I was like, I'm tired of hearing this. I'm tired of hearing that. Let's change the world now. And, and then of course, you know, you know, with the pitching, you get so used to re being rejected. Yes. And when I got the letter, okay, we want you to do a talk. I'm like, oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> I'm always like floored. Like you want me to actually say something like, okay, that's cool. <laughs> that's amazing. I love the humility. Cause then what that does is allow you not, it's not about you. Right? Yeah. You, you stay at that level of uh, uh, that servant, right? I want to give value. I want to ensure that anyone yeah. who hears me speaking is better off for having heard me speak that yeah. their life is impacted. So you had mentioned that you have this, uh, uh, business thing that you're launching that you're a little, I think you were a little excited about it. So I want oh, what am I launching now? What am I launching? <laughs> <laughs> I'm always doing something. Um, one thing that's coming up is um, I'm actually doing my first live event. And I've oh. never been a live event girl. I've been a, yeah, no, I don't want to do that. And what is happening with that is actually um, we're getting up the website and everything, but it's pitchlab2020.com. And it really is um, a whole day with me learning how to pitch and land speaking gigs. I'm bringing, I'm calling in all the favors of all my friends who are event coordinators, and I'm going to give people the floor to throw all the questions at them of what they look for when it comes to speaking gigs. We're going to do a panel on TEDx of what it takes to get on a TEDx stage. Nice. So I just want everybody like, seriously, I want you to come and ask them all the questions. Um, and the way that came about was through speaking and um, a young man who owns, it's gonna be part of PodFest. Um, it is a big podcasting conference. And he reached out to me and he was just like, he said, I love what you're doing. I mean, it was kind of out of the blue. He's like, I love what you're doing. You're amazing. He's like, I really believe in you. And you could, I was like, oh, wow. So it, it is kind of, I mean, you just get in a place where somebody calls and tells you like, I honestly believe in you. Um, and you can do this because um, my brain was like, oh, I can get 10 people in a room because that's only who's going to be interested in it. He was like, yeah, I'm thinking about 250. I'm like, oh, OK, that's more than 10. <laughs> but um, but no, he's going to be one of the big investors in this. Um, and I'm just so appreciative that yeah. I really do want to do a great job and, you know, have people come because my thing is it, it's not rocket science to get on stage. Um, I just want to show you everything. And, and he runs quite a few events. He's going to be on stage. So you can ask the questions of why won't you pay me? What will it take to get on stage? Why do you ignore me? I, I want all of those hard questions to be thrown at all these event coordinators because I still have these questions too. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, I just have to, we're going to be wrapping it up here, but I love that as you have stepped into, we, we start, one of the first things you said was that when you started owning your greatness, mm -hmm. right? When, and we mentioned that when you, and, and it requires going inside, it requires answering the prompting, it requires pushing past the fear, everything. And, and I tell people, and I just did this woman's and everything, I said, there is no success without fear, without failure, without second guessing, <laughs> without falling. Like you said, when they're going to teach entrepreneur class, what they're going to teach you how to not smear your mascara. I know <laughs> waterproof because, mascara because <laughs> it's an individual path and journey. Anyone listening, being on stage, right? Cause everybody, you know, speak for pay, speak for money, speak to sell. Right. And if you've heard correctly here, it is speaking to add value. And then the value translates into money. You because you're it creating will. a win win. You're not just looking to get something because everyone knows what it feels like when someone's trying to get something from you. Yeah. And I love that you want to give someone something and that law of reciprocity kicks in. So now that they want more. Because they're you like, know this what? is amazing. I love it because one of the things I struggle with with getting speaking gigs, it, they make it such a secret. Like, how do you do this? And I was like, this is not rocket science, people. I've worked with these folks. This ain't that hard. So just tell me. And I was like, fine, I will go figure it out on my own on how to do this. And I'm going to spill all the secrets on how to get on stage. And, um, and, and, it, and I tell people it is not an overnight thing. It doesn't happen quickly. Mm -hmm. And I have people, they were like, well, Felicia, you put in a lot of work. Cause I, I, um, once a week for eight hours, this is all I do. I go out and pitch 
and research gigs just for me. And, and people say, well, that's a lot of, that's a lot of time. I don't have time for that. And then it's like, well, I don't know what else to tell you. And I'm pretty sure there's another <laughs> way to do speak. it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure there's other ways to do it, but what I realized is that consistency and credibility is what's going to pay off in the long run. And is like I said, it's a long game because sometimes these speaking gigs lead to opportunities to meet other people. Um, the young man who runs PodFest and I mean, I had my, my dear sweet friend over in the UK. He, I call he's my wingman. He was the one who referred me to this event. He saw me because I brought my A game when I was on stage and had one of the biggest sessions at his event. And um, he helped me get a gig uh, two weeks ago and we filled the room. I mean, people were sitting on the floor um, for my session and, and, and just for him calling and say, he's like, I believe in you and I want you to come be a part of my event. Um, I mean, it just speaks the world to what can happen when you decide to put yourself out there. The television show came from speaking. My second TEDx talk, actually, uh, <laughs> that would actually came from speaking and knowing people and, you know, going after an MC gig, then he offered the TEDx talk. So um, getting out and speaking is so much more than just getting paid. You meet some amazing people. And I always tell people, you never know who's in the room. You never know who's going to call you in a year or two, and yep. you never know who will who's watching. So um, it's an amazing way to grow a business. Um, you will work your butt off to do it because <laughs> there is a sec the days it ain't sexy. The only sexy days are when I put the spanks on and get on stage. I know the rest of it is like working. <laughs> The rest of nice. it looks like this. I am working. <laughs> <laughs> and I appreciate that you got on in your realness, right? Because, mm -hmm. yeah, you know what? I tell people, if anybody's looking, I'm on a business mullet. I'm in a hotel room and everything from the race down is prepping me so that I can wash this off and go do get on the <laughs> treadmill and walk some, right? <laughs> so, yeah, the realness is that we are, you're, you're someone who's called to serve and you're serving exceptionally well. Mm -hmm. And for that, I am grateful. So oh, having you. said that, how do people get in touch with you? How do they find out more about I Find You Clothes? How, where would a great start? I'm listening to you. I want more speaking gigs. Um, anybody listening? Let's get you speaking before you jump into the TEDx, right? You know let's what? Get let's you let's get you on stage. <laughs> um, one final thing before I say where you can find me. Um, this is my quote and I quote myself, opportunities do not fall in your lap. You have to go out there and create them. So if this is something you want, be ready to put in the work and the gains will come from it. If you need me to help you with anything, you can find me at ifindyouclose.com and that's C-L-O-S-E.com. If you want to follow me on social media, my personal brand is uh, at Keep Up With Mrs. Jones. And um, literally you can find me through all of those channels and I'm pretty easy to get in contact with. You can schedule a meeting, we can chat, whatever I can do to help you get on stage or at least give you some direction in the right way. All you have to do is reach out. So go to ifindyouclose.com. You can find me there, schedule a one-on-one -on -one and we will talk or you can sign up for the service. I send you speaking leads every week. Or um, you can go find me on social media at Keep Up With Mrs. Jones. Um, I'm going to be on the road for the next couple of weeks. So if I don't respond really fast, <laughs> I will get back to you. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so I just posted it in the chat, the link to ifindyouclothes.com. Mm -hmm. So if anybody wants to click on that link or uh, Keep Up With Mrs. Jones, uh, is it Mrs. Jones or Ms. Jones? It's Mrs. Jones. So yeah, so I float between two different worlds. So <laughs> Uh, my personal brand is Keep Up with Mrs. Jones, and that's where I talk about the money. But I find you clothes is all the uh, all the speaking awesome. stuff. Yeah, awesome, awesome. <laughs> well, thank you, Felicia. We are going to wrap this up now. Um, I just want to say for anyone listening, again, this is Michelle Baker. I'm your host. We'll be here next Monday on the 28th because today is the 21st. Uh, <laughs> and this is sponsored by the National Association of Sales Professionals. It's an organization that I partner with because I love all, all things selling. And one of the things that I love is that in order to have more sales success, you gotta know where you are, right? What is your ideal person who sells, who has those conversations that converts more clients and enrollees? Well, no one understand your current selling style. And that's something that we offer no cost is a seller style assessment at www.nasp join. And currently for a limited time, 
uh, trust me, this is very limited, you can get a complimentary seller style assessment call, a feedback call that actually talks about your current and your ideal selling style, which will give you some actual tips on how to move through those seamlessly so that you can start closing more deals and talk to her and you'll have more stages Mm because you want to get on stage. You want to be able to close what you create on stage. So they go together. Trust me. Have a great Monday. Stay where you are, Felicia, and I'll see everybody next week. Thank you. Yay.